What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codeby.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to check your hashed passwords for our app with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at checking our hashed passwords, see if they're correct or not. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codeme.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we sort of hooked up our password hashing system to the website itself so we can actually enter a password. It hashes it for us, it saves it as a hashed password in the database. In this video, I want to show you how to sort of enter the regular password, the original password you picked, and then compare it to the hashed one sort of automatically to determine whether or not you typed in the right password. So as I said in the last video, this is the hashed password right here. This is what gets saved to the database. So how does the system know when I go to log in later and I just type in my regular password, how does it know that that password that I type in is the same as this big long hash thing right here? And that's what we're gonna sort of work on in this video. It's actually pretty simple, but there's a lot of little moving parts. So I'm just gonna kind of abstract this away and build out another web page where we can enter our email address and the password, and then it will test for us and say, yes, that's the correct password, or no, that's not the correct password. And then later on, we'll sort of use that to build out the registration system. We're not gonna do the whole registration system in this video. We're just gonna work on sort of understanding how that little password thing works. Okay, so let's head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code for this video and all the videos in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Flask videos in this series. So if you remember way back at the beginning of this series, we did this thing, let's see if we can find it, called name. And in that thing, let me pull up the website real quick here. We go to name, you just type in your name, John, it says, hello, John, and then puts a picture up on the screen. So I'm gonna take the code from that because that's basically what we need. We just need a, a little form here that we can type in our email address and a password and then it bring back a web page. So let's head back over to the code and that page was name. So let's go over to our templates here and let's look up name and here's that name page. So I'm just gonna kind of copy all of this and let's create a new template file. And I'm gonna save this as Let's go file save as. Let's just call this test underscore pw.html. We're going to test our password, right? I'm going to paste in all that name stuff and go ahead and save this. And we'll come back here and tinker with this in just a minute. Now let's head back over to our hello.py file. Let's just copy this whole function here and sort of play around with it. So instead of create name page, let's go create password test page. And instead of having this name, let's change this to test underscore PW. We still want to get or post. And then instead of calling this name, let's call this test underscore PW. And now we're going to have to put a bunch of stuff here. We don't need to check name anymore, but we do want to check email. And we want to check password. Put that to none. We also want to create a variable called password to underscore check. Set that equal to none, and I'll show you what all this stuff is in just a second. And finally, let's create a variable called passed and set that equal to none. So we're gonna say, we're gonna type in a password, and then we're gonna say, did it pass or did it fail, right? Was it the right password or the wrong password? So I'm gonna call that passed. And let's also create a form called password form. All right. So before we go further, let's create this password form real quick. And if we go back to our name form, uh, where is that at? There it is, name or form. Let's just copy this guy and do another one. And we'll call this password form. All right, password form. And we just want two things, email. And let's change this to what's your email. We probably do want to validate it. I'm just going to copy this whole thing and do it a second time and we'll call this one password underscore hash because that's what we called it earlier. And instead of a string field, we want a password field. And then here, what's your password? Okay, so just a very simple, simple form that we can use on this new page that we're creating. So that's called password form. So, okay, 
Come back down here again. So we're passing that form in. Okay, so what this is gonna do is put this form up on the page. It's gonna ask for an email address and a password, right? So when that when we click submit, that stuff's gonna come back to this function and we need to do some stuff with it. So inside of here, let's go instead of name, let's call this email. And this is gonna be form email data. We also want a password and that's gonna be form.password underscore hash dot data. And let's go ahead and clear this. So form.email.data and form.password underscore hash dot data equals nothing. And we don't really need a flash message for this. Clear the form, whatever. Okay. Now the name of this is not name.html. We called this test underscore password.html. And we want to pass in all these things. So email equals email, password equals password. And we're eventually going to pass in this past and password to check, but not right now. Let's just get this thing working first. So, okay, go ahead and save that. Okay, so let's head back over here to our test underscore pw.html file. And here, first we want to change this to email because we're passing in email. So if there is an email, that means we filled out the form and clicked the button. Otherwise, there won't be an email. And so let's just pat, let's just put that on the screen, email, just to make sure this is working. And I'm going to put email here. And let's do another one of these h1. And let's go password. And this will be the password that we entered. Okay, and let's get rid of this image stuff. I don't want any of that. Okay, so if we didn't fill out the form, that means we want to fill out the form. So Let's say, what's your email and password? And this is going to be an email label. And this is going to be form.email. And we need another one of these. So let's just copy this. And this other one will be password underscore hash label and password underscore hash. Okay. Okay, so that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that this is all working. We did that kind of quick. So instead of going to name, we want to go to test underscore PW. And okay, we got this form. And that looks good. Um, let's put some space here. It's just gonna bug me if I don't. So <laughs> let's see, that's gonna be right here. Boom. Okay. Even though this really doesn't matter. All right, that's better. So we click this, nothing happens. What's your email? J at j.com. What's your password? Uh, type in anything. So, okay, it's passing j at j.com and whatever we typed in, that looks like it's working. So, okay, so far so good. Now let's actually do stuff with this. Let's take whatever we typed in here, use that to look up the email address, see if it's in the system. If it is, grab the password and then test to see if we typed the right password. So let's do that. So let's head back over here. We don't need our name.html file anymore. So, okay, in our test underscore PW function here, let's come down here. So if, if the form was filled out, we've got an email and a password, right? So let's take that stuff and do something with it. So let's look up the user first. So I'm gonna call this uh, PW2 underscore check. And maybe we should call it user to check because we're checking the user, but whatever. Password to check. And this is going to be users dot, let's query the database and let's filter underscore by, and let's say email equals email. And then we want the dot first. So if, so we're going to fill out the form with an email address. We're going to take that email address and look it up in the database and return the first result. If it exists, it'll return that. If not, well, it won't return anything, I guess. Now let's pass this onto the page. So let's come down here. Password to check equals password to check. Okay, so now we can reference this on our page. So let's come back here. Let's play around with this here. Let's say, um, I don't know, H2, I found this info. All right, so let's go dot, name, name, 
Let's go email. Password to check dot email. Let's go password. Password to check dot password underscore hash. And that's good for now. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here. And let's just type in um, e at e or r dot com, whatever. Click this. I found this info, nothing. So it's not finding anything because that person isn't in there. So, okay. Uh, now this is not great, but we're just doing this to play around with. This is not going to be the actual registration system. You'll understand in a minute. So let's head back over to our add users real quick and let's see who our users are. Let's just create a new one. Uh, this is going to be John Elder. My email is john at codemy.com. My favorite color is, I don't know, let's just say blue. And for the password, I'm going to say password one, two, three, confirm password one, two, three. So let's go ahead and submit. Come back, check it out. All right, there's John Elder, John at Codemy.com. There's my big long password. So now let's head back to our test underscore password page. And let's look that guy up. So John at Codemy.com. Right. And Let's type in password one, two, three. Click submit. Okay, so John at codemy.com, password one, two, three. That's what I entered. That's this big stuff right here. And then I found this info. Oh man, that's no good. We need some line breaks. <laughs> All right, so let's go uh, line break there, line break there, line break there. All right, now let's. Okay, there we go. Now let's head back over here. Let's reload this guy. Okay, so name John Elder, that's coming from the database. Email john at codemy.com, that's coming from the database. And then here is my hashed password. This is the password I typed in in that form just now. This is the actual hashed password. So how do we compare this big long hash password to the password that I entered in? That's what we're gonna do now. So last thing, let's come over here to our hello.py file and inside of the same function here, the test underscore PW, Let's come here. Okay, here's where we looked up the user in the database by email. Now let's let's get rid of that. Let's say uh, check hashed password and and let's comment here. Look up user by email address. Okay, so we want to check the hashed password to see if it's correct. So come up to the very top here. And two videos ago, when we set up our Verkzoig stuff. Or however you say that, we have these two functions, generate password hash right there and check password hash right there, which has also been imported up here at the very top right here, check password hash. So that's what we want to do. We want to check the password hash. So let's come down here. Back to our test PW function and let's use that guy. So we just call it. Now we pass in two arguments. The first one is the hashed, the second one is the plain text. Well, what's the hashed one? That's gonna be password to check dot password underscore hash, comma, right? That's the hashed password from the database that we just looked up right here with this guy, right? So that's this dot password underscore hash. And now what do we want to sort of compare it to the password that we typed into the form, which is this, our form dot password underscore hash dot data or password. So we can just pass this second variable, boom, right like that. Now what this will return is true or false, right? If the two compare, it's true. If they don't, it's false. So if we type in the right password, this will return true. If we don't, it will return false. So we need to keep track of whether it returns true or false. So let's create a variable for that called past and set this whole thing equal to it. And you remember up here at the top of this function, we created this past variable. That's why we did that. And so there that there it is. And we need to pass that in. Uh, this guy got deleted accidentally, it looks like. Let's put back, there we go. Okay, so now we just pass that back and now we can access that on the web page. So let's come down here. Let's create another line break and let's type in past and then that past variable. 
Okay, so this will return true if it's the passwords are correct. It'll return false if they're not. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, and let's come back here and try this again. John at codemy.com. My password is password123. Click submit. It says pass, true. We're good to go. That means that this and this go together, right? I typed in the correct password. We can try something else. Come back here, hit reload. So john at codemy.com. I'm just going to type in a bunch of gobbledygook. Click submit. Now it's false because this password is not the same as this hash. So it returns false. Uh, we could type in, I like cheese. <laughs> right. So there's our password. I like cheese. There's the hash. It's false because my password is not I like cheese. So this is returning false. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So this is a big, long, convoluted way of showing you how to compare these two things. In reality, you're not going to go through all of this to create our user registration system. All we really need is, well, let's see, where did it go? This guy right here, right? This check password hash. So in the future, when we're building out the actual user registration system, we'll just, you know, slip this in there to check the passwords. And that'll be that easy. I just wanted to create a little interface here in this video to kind of walk you through it and show you, you know, very graphically how we can compare these two, the result we get true or false and what that means. So you have a really good understanding of what's going on now, hopefully. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code use one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.